So I get questions all the time, usually when I post my guns. How do you make your guns look like this? How do you paint them like that? What sort of technique do you use? Well, it's kind of a variety of things, several different techniques. But today I'm going to show you guys generally the kind of process I go through. So as far as paint goes, I think everybody pretty much knows uh, the camo rust-oleum stuff is great. Anything satin rust-oleum is going to be good for camouflage purposes. Anything, you know, without a sheen. Even just the cheap little, you know, 96 cent black can be useful for a lot of things. Because really, when it comes to black and things that I use to darken, I prefer something on the cheaper side because it seems like it doesn't spray as well. And it's easier to control because of that. It seems like there's less um, less pigment in it. So it's really easy to use really cheap, shitty spray paint to blend. So as far as the actual patterning materials, uh, this is where my secret comes in a lot. I've got a variety of, they're actually placemats. This one came from Target. Uh, this one originally came from Kmart. I think you can see the kind of theme here though. I'm just using these as stencils, essentially. They're, they're just vinyl. They hold up really well. I've used them a million times. But anything that you can spray through can essentially be a stencil. And from time to time, I'll also use your sort of generic fishnet or, you know, just some sort of mesh laundry bag or whatever it may be. So my first step is always to establish a base coat. It can be any color you like. Uh, general color theory, it's easier to work light to dark. That's how I recommend doing it. Uh, you'll just run into less hassles. You won't fight yourself as much. So typically, I'll lay down a light base coat, usually a tan, maybe a light green, depending on how I'm feeling. And then I'll come in and just begin establishing some contrasting stripes in a slightly darker color. It can be as tight or as loose as you want. It can just be a, you know, a vague, subtle stripe. It doesn't matter in the end. You're going to work over it so much. You probably won't even see the initial stripe. I mean, you can get down on it. You can do heavy coats. You can do light coats. It's... <laughs> It's spray paint, don't overthink it. After I get that first layer of stripes down, bumping up the contrast, I'll take my stripe color and apply it over my base coat section. However heavy handed or light I desire. And you can see the effect start to take place. generally speaking. Eh. Whatever. And then, in turn, of course, you do the exact opposite over your stripes with your base coat color. A lighter color is going to cover a little bit easier, so you can probably go a little bit lighter with it. Maybe, kind of. You know, just that sort of thing. Obviously, naturally, with stencils, it's only going to be as defined as close as you get it to the gun. You do need to get it pretty close, typically in my experience, unless you want a lighter sort of stroke. Pretty, pretty straightforward on that. Now, as of late, once I get my main sort of layout established, I tend to think in terms of macro and micro patterns. Um, macro, of course, being a larger pattern, the micro being a smaller pattern within that pattern. So having two forms of stencils or whatever you choose to use going on, two textures, whatever it may be, that can only serve to help you. So generally, I just kind of go I don't know, I just kind of go with the flow. I, I find areas that I think are too dark or too light, and I, I balance it out from there. Usually at this point, I bring in a third color, and then I swap back between stencils or colors as needed. I mean, you know, and you, can go, you can go super crazy all the way in, like just get right up on it, and that's what you end up with. You can generally end up with a big oversaturated area then you have to 
deal with that however you choose to deal with that but that's not the end of the world just kind of going about in a miscellaneous sort of fashion as light or as heavy as you see fit whatever you think looks good it's your gun not mine just working your way across establishing contrast is the key thing here and especially with those macro and micro patterns that's that's where it tends to show through the more contrast you can establish the better it's going to appear visually well the better it's going to appear visually the cooler it's going to look for one um, the more professional and time intensive it's going to look but it's also going to work better optically in terms of camouflage so that's the main thing so now i've got some areas that are really really saturated in brown obviously so i might go back to my base coat color with one of my macro patterns and try to lighten it up a little bit see there you go it doesn't take very much at all i mean you can it's it's going to make it through it have have no doubt you can go as slowly and gradually as you would like see now that's a bit too much in my opinion so it's kind of a fine line. I mean, that's that's the beauty of spray paint being obviously an aerosol. You can do very light blends, very light misting, so on and so forth. It's kind of hard to tell in this lighting how it's coming out, but you know, it's through here you can see obviously you can get really defined sections or through here it's very misty very very blended per se you know compared to obviously just a solid color rifle on the other side 